stage because we have uh, with us today Mr. Alex Rovira. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure that uh, we'll have questions from the audience. I have a first question. Uh, you will find uh, the question in the app. Cybersecurity is something that relies on people, on management, on the organization, IT people, or is it just one more uh, process in uh, product design? I I'd like to ask you this question. As we said this morning, this is an uh, inspirational session, and we want this to be a conversation. We now are here on stage, and we'll be glad to have the rest of, uh, of the panelists with you during the debate session. Good afternoon. Dear friends, for me, it's a great honor and a joy to be here in the Basque Country. And thank you for inviting me. Let's talk about people. And let's talk about perspective. Pr perspective is a science that combines two fundamental variables, impacts that generate different scenarios. One impact is economy, another one is demography, another one is technology, another one is ecology. This talk is not focusing on cybersecurity more specifically. I'm going to make reflections around cybersecurity because I'm not an expert. I'm a consultant, I'm an entrepreneur, so I would, I would deal uh, with the accompaniment of uh, companies and firms. C can we uh, activate the presentation, please? De la, de la the subtitle of this presentation, we can just see it now, uh, talks about three different trends. Ten trends, scenarios, and humanization. It's, uh, let's swing through various essential impacts that are going to uh, set up our present and our future. The uh, future is not, it, it, it's not unavoidable. We need to invent it, to create it. On this basis, we'll build scenarios. And at the end, I will talk about the way we can manage this uh, new world. We cannot make progress. We only can make progress when we think big. You can only advance when you look very uh, far away. You know that in Switzerland or Sweden or Norway and in South Korea, they have prospective ministries in order to provide with useful information to uh, companies and uh, uh, startups, entrepreneurs, so that they know what happens and what will happen. That is prospective. Looking far is, in fact, thinking how we're going to be in one year, collectively, individually. How Seneca said, if you don't know to what harbor you are sailing, you need to know what are the favorable winds. You need to have a direction. It's critical. In the world of management, people speak about strategy, strategy. Peter Drake said every day for breakfast, in fact, we can, uh, in fact, culture eats strategy. I've seen fantastic strategies with very bad cultures, and the results are awful. With normal um, strategies, you can have very good cultures and extraordinary results. To transform a human system, you need to empower and to reinforce culture. This is the starting of our voyage. And this is a picture that was Im printed in a North American uh, magazine. It was called Judge, a very old magazine. It was the state of the art. And this is perspective because the experts of the time had these great ideas. The illustrator uh, had to talk with architects, bi uh, builders, and engineers. And what is the title of this picture? How the world will be in New York on the 1st of January th on the year 2000. And that's the picture he drew. He drew. And he thought, OK, the buildings will be very high. This is the concept. If I live here, up here, how can I go down the building to do my shopping and access various services? Don't worry, you will have a steam machine. It's, uh, you see here, it's the railway, and this train will, will go up and down. The idea of a lift was not even in their minds. It, this was at the end of the 18th century. You will have theaters, gardens, and if even 
he, here you, you can see um, a church. You will have cables going down here that will communicate with different blocks in this building and here, museums, shops and services. Mobility uh, is with uh, horses, in fact, and chariots. And we will have also electrical trains and trams. This is the wild future that was invented in the year 1896. This forecast was a, a reality. The noble park in New York was basically used by electrical vehicles with uh, Thomas Alva Edison, J.P. Morgan and the um, American government decided that oil was going to be used uh, for the, the uh, American uh, economy. In, in, if this writer in, at that time had drawn this, this is Shanghai today, Dubai. No, nobody would have understood what it meant because they couldn't conceptualize more than rectangles and light lines, no more. The conquistadors in, from Spain got to America and they, they were not perceived because natives uh, couldn't see the boats. They didn't understand the concept of a vessel, of a boat. So there's a critical variable. The first one is the following. What we're going to live, we cannot imagine, because there's a concept, a fundamental concept behind it. It's called synergies. Let's try to explain a, a very simple application. Many teenagers use it, and some adults too. Snapchat, for instance. Snapchat is uh, an app. It's an IT app for short messaging. It's very visual. Let's explain this to our ancestors. What is an application? Uh, it's a software. What is software? What is, that? What is IT? If you make this ex do this exercise, in fact, we need to explain 40 different concepts to cognit cognitively uh, convey the message because the person doesn't know about this. Techn the person doesn't know about technology. These were unknown technology. Those who were born after technology, these apps are normal things and they do not require explanations. The, the factor called synergy allows us to realize that Shanghai was a rice field in the past and now it's one of the biggest cities in the world. And Dubai was a desert with 4,000 uh, goats and now it's a, one of the bigger cities in, in the area. The synergy factor, uh, we can only create it ourselves. We cannot, we cannot imagine it. We cannot have a forecast about that because you need the, the combination of different aspects and there you can get value added and you cannot imagine it beforehand. Let's make this voyage in future scenarios. And from there, we would view uh, what our um, future holds. Let's start with economy. Um, in, in our global economy, there's going to be a change in global polarity. In the year 2016, this is the uh, GDP ranking, and this is 2050. In yellow, emerging countries or uh, the countries that are man, uh, maintaining their GDP. Here you see that Germany and the UK might, might, may be out of the uh, European Union. Now you see the changes between 2016 and 2050. Don't kill the messenger, but Spain, if you, we don't do anything, we will have a decline in GDP. We're going to lose a lot. That's a trend. Maybe not here in the Basque country, but uh, Spain as a whole, we don't even know what is happening in Spain. Other countries are going to react. See, in the next few years, Years, 34 uh, years, Philippine, the Philippines, Nigeria, uh, Vietnam. Let's see uh, the increase in population too. China, India, except the US. You see here China, India, Indonesia come from Asia. Brazil and Russia, the emerging uh, countries are, are going to eat the world. Mexico, Japan, and Germany is going down. And UK, it's going to go down because of their financial economy. China, from 18 to 20 percent, that's their global participa participation. Here you see the different figures. 
the share of world GDP. And this is in 2050. Don't get depressed because I have good news. India from 7 to 15, India is now growing at a, uh, more rapidly than China. And they're going to be fighting between them, China and India. In 1995, E7, the E7, that was half of the G7. In 2015, it was even. And in, in just 25 years, could be double the size of G G7. We will have, we'll be more Asian, we'll be more Mexican, more Brazilian, more Turkish. And the developed countries are going to stagnate. Here, you see the rest of the world, they're, they're losing participation if we compare with E7 and G7. Second impact, we have 45 minutes. Population. I was born in 69. I'm 49 years. My life expectation when I was born was 71 years of age. And then uh, I knew that, that I was going to retire after uh, my employment years. Now my life expectation is 82. If I live to 92 years, my life expectation will be 104 um, and years of age. In just 10 years in the Western world, the number of people with mo of more than 100 years is going to double. The normal uh, life expectancy without vaccines and uh, antibiotics and prophylaxis is just 40 years. Thanks to Fleming, we can we live 20 more years and with Pasteur too we have uh, won many battles ag against bacteria but now our life expectation is going to go further with cyborgs we can even we can live more than 120 years if you can pay for it you will live longer and what about our global population the senior population is going to increase a lot. You see the figures here. One third of the population in 2049. But where? Where are we going to be? And I'm, I'm, I'm including myself, the, these senior people. Where are we going to live? And what is the evolution of the world population? You have to take this into account because what we can anticipate is uh, that big market niches are going to be big, big niches. Niches are were small, but now niche markets are going to be huge because of this factor that I'm going to describe now. And then I, I'll link it with the evolution of middle classes in the world, numbers and origin. This is the populational uh, pyramid uh, last year. What about 2050? That it is paribus, if everything stays the same, let's, uh, let's have a look at the figures. In 2100, look at that. Billions of people in less, in less than 82 years, we're going to have more than 3.7 billion inhabitants more on the earth. And every day, Every day, 122,000 new inhabitants on the world. It's incredible. It's a bit frightening. We are aging in the north, the, in the Commonwealth countries. We're getting older. The south of our world, they're growing a lot, except for Uruguay, but especially uh, in Africa. It's growing a lot in population. Another relevant piece of data in Spain. The active population in 2049, minus 19%. But the retired people, number of retired people, more than 98%. So we need an economy with solidarity, of an efficient economy. If we cannot be sustained from values, it, there will be no value generation and no distribution of wealth. And Psychology creates economy. All economic crisis is the result of an important assumption, moral misery in general. And this creates economic misery. A crisis is not emerging by chance. It's the result of moral misery. And if we don't have a good governance, a good management, which is based on principles, on sustainable values, I mean, um, in human and ecological value, we'll have more crisis because that's nature and because everything has a price. There's a difference here between 
population pyramids in Spain and uh, a pyramid in Nigeria in 1970, the European population and African population were the same. In the year 2000, uh, um, to 2100, it was the same. Uh, let's see the population. Spain and Nigeria, it's inverted in, it's a sword. Uh, this is the shape of a sword. In 2050, we will have we will lose 1.2, and we have lost 8 million in population because the rich people from Asia will come here because they are now buying airports, and the Charles de Gaulle airport in Paris. Who bought the Piraeus Harbour in Greece? It's a, a Chinese investment fund who bought a. Uh, in Porto in Portugal, Chinese people. Who is buying the biggest infrastructures on the world? It's China. And the prisoners are building infrastructures in Africa because they're buying fields for cultivation. So they're now investing a lot in Africa. And they're buying uh, land. The, what the uh, pr uh, Chinese prime minister uh, it says what he says, and you will understand that they now are trying to conquer, conquer the world. Here you see the figures in Nigeria. This is the pyramid. 752 million people. Por eso Nigeria. So Nigeria will be the fourth in GDP participation at world level because of their demographics because of their population. So we do apply global governance policies to re redistribute wealth, and there's a redistribution of corruption and moral misery. That's what ha what's hap going to happen, and more crisis. Our challenge today is not a, a digital uh, challenge. It's about humanization. Otherwise, there will be no solution but conflict. If this has been a, a traditional uh, historical var variable. It, and pill for all. So Lira Genomics had to invest $2 billion in 10 years for this. Now you can get to Google and say genomic map. And it, they, it, took, it took them 10 years for the genomic uh, map. Sometimes you can pay $100 and you can have your genomic map. 280 more specifically. You have to mix, mix a liquid with a tablet. You can send it to California, and you receive your a genomic map. And I, I've got it. And I was moved about because I have blood from all the planet, from all origins. There's a specific clause. Do you want uh, people that you don't know to be in contact with you because you share the, uh, your blood with these people? And I said, yes. And uh, my grandfather didn't go to Philipp the Philippines to make war. He wasn't alone. I have genomic uh, parents in France, Portugal, Germany, Denmark. It's fantastic this, to do this exercise. Things, uh, paradigms are going to ch change. The Gattaca film is going to be true. According to the Moore law, this goes faster than in IT. In 10 years, to have a genomic map, will be so uh, cheap that you can all have for free. You have a genomic map with an application, with a device that can um, get your DNA. You can have your map with your DNA map with uh, a little device, and you can go to the insurance companies, to your doctors. And when something is mutating in your DNA, you're going to be warned, and you can get prepared, and that, that's going to be so cheap. That's why we're going to live longer. Talking about digitalization, in one minute, this happens. Well, just forget about figures. In one minute, five billion people of, uh, um, say, I like this. Per minute, we're talking about transactional uh, economics. Uh, uh, attention economics. We are industrial companies, but never in history we had the opportunity to s explain what our product services is. It's so cheap. It's a, it's a different type of um, advertising. You know who Mariano Medina is? Please raise your hands. Well, he was this 
weather forecast guy on TV, and I was with him in a phys physics congress, and I said to him, oh, Mariano, you were a weather forecast man. Today, we don't know who are our reference people. When, what is a reference for us? You can be an, an opinion leader. You can be a weather forecast man. You can create moods from pedagogy, from provocation, from the internet, you can have humanistic con content in the internet. You know Chiara Ferraghi? Well, because you, you are from my generation, but this lady started to um, make photos with Instagram. She's very beautiful, and the big brands realized that she had thousands and thousands of followers. And now she's, in, she, she's doing product campaigns, but she's not a model but she ha knows how to write. For each Instagram photo, she receives uh, $100,000. And she describes the photos, and she speaks about the brands. But in the text, there's no creativity. It's just an Instagram picture. That this is a relevant impact, because we can be opinion leaders, and we can capitalize our assets. As long as we uh, give value to a uh, uh, target uh, audience, digitization, synergies of new uses, new tools, virtual reality, enlarged reality, graph, the graphene industry, addictive industry. It's critical to understand the purchasing processes. What are we're going to break up with classical roles, who's a prescriptor. At the same time, you can be a counter-prescriptor. You need to know uh, your purchasing uh, roles. The classical roles, traditional roles in marketing have totally changed. And we need to do an ad hoc uh, marketing study. And this market is going to become a cooperation platform. It's about transaction, learning, synergy, training. We're going to compete with other people in our sector. But it's going to be very useful to get allies in order to have scale economies, to have sharings, meetings like this that are organized by public uh, agencies. Uh, will these type of initiatives are very good. Thank you, because thanks to these people who are there to serve, we're going to be together. And then we will have unexpected emergent roles in apps with many different sectors of activity. Nobody would, would imagine this, these new apps every day. And what's going to happen with all this? And now I'm, I'm advising many companies about digitalization. We should change the name of digitalization. And cybersecurity is fundamental. It's not an option. It's crucial. It's not a choice. You have to do it. It's a must. Why? Because it's systemic. Because it affects everything. Transactional dynamics, finance management, devices, networks. Don't think about patches, but about systemics. We need proactive systems. We're not just here to manage risks and threats. We're not just here to wait and see for a problem to uh, appear. Let's think about cybersecurity as a critical element in the value chain. Not just don't think about vulnerabilities. It's more, more than that. Cybersecurity or digital value? One of the tools is cybersecurity, but it's just one element. So let's shift the paradigm. It's not just a hygienic factor. It's a critical factor for success. Why? Because the time you need to uh, use to manage a cybersecurity crisis creates a lot of crisis in your team. And you cannot use resource, resources for other areas in your company. You can create value. It, this is a, a m one more impact. And the world is going to change because we will perceive it differently with augmented reality through our own devices. For instance, in uh, big markets like this one, there are companies who are, which are already uh, using all types of information, recipes, features uh, of the product, ingredients, nutritional data. And this is located in the store. And the, the, the Ikea, IKEA is now working on a virtual catalog with uh, augmented reality. It's a very high level of definition because they include uh, light uh, in your space, and you can imagine ooh, the specific setup in your living room 
and you will know ex exactly uh, how much time you need uh, to uh, do your kit. It's going to be uh, evolving. The IKEA people are very smart and going to be very fast. Graphene, it's a magical material. It's about carbon. Graphene is there in our pencils. It's very efficient with a high thermal and electric conductivity. It's uh, 200 times harder than uh, steel. And these are the features of graphene. This is the, the biggest material because it, this is going to be the end of uh, hydrocarbons. You can have a, a battery in, with graphene that uh, will last uh, for, for years. This is a, a great material for um, trademarks. It's going to use, be used for many applications with high-speed cables, photographic cameras, batteries. Long, and this is going to change our cities. Remote uh, energy uh, generation with big cables, this is going to disappear if there's political will. Thanks to graphene, we can have specific generation of energy. It's magic. And then, of course, there's, there's going to be corruption. And what? A, and then we, we have competition between different sources of energy. Nanotechnology is going to change the world. Ke chemotherapy will not be invasive anymore. It will be inoculated uh, in our blood uh, flood. And the, we'll ha we, we will have a specific active, uh, active uh, medicine uh, released into the tumor with thousands of uh, uh, application areas for water. For instance, a company in uh, Spain has created a small rock sack, which is cheapest than uh, the one that is used by armies in the world. It's, it, he's won a prize in California. You put it on the, on the ground, it gets all the solar energy. This is turned into electricity. And then you can use a pump for the pipe that goes to the uh, polluted aquifer, and then on the other side of the of the pipe, you get clean water. There's a circuit in this rucksack, and there are membranes, microfiltering membranes, with an oxygenated water that has been treated. And of course, he's selling a lot of these rucksacks so that uh, water can be uh, cleaned. We can improve our world, but. I think that intelligence had have to be a service of uh, humanism and moral values. So we need to c combine it, education and information, because we'll be more and more people on this earth. We need well-formed people, but also well-trained and well-educated people. The world is going to travel more and more from Asia. 200 million Chinese people will travel outside China in 2020. Why are they coming here? Because these are Chinese beaches today, and they will come here. OK, let's make them all look nice and tidy. Even so, they won't fit. So let's put them into a pool. Well, we're just not aware of uh, what kind of environment we enjoy. Look at that. They're at the pool, and they look happy. Please raise your hand if that looks happy and nice to you. Oh, you, you, you like that, do you? Well, there's got to be all sorts. Sorry. City growth is so huge that Shanghai City cannot be drawn uh, on a piece of paper because infrastructures keep changing. Uh, and what do they do? Well, uh, with a 3D battery of printers uh, in a massive building unit, uh, they can just about manage to do city planning. And that's the paradigm that's to come uh, in the near future. And empires uh, tend to go from the east to the west, from the east to the west, rotating on planet Earth. And which is the new empire to come? Well, that's the first one. And then after that, after Africa, it will be India. One billion new consumers uh, in the next decade. Uh, what will be the problem? Sustainability, management of uh, natural resources, uh, our footprint. And thanks to that, uh, there will be new 
areas of opportunities, such as recycling. Look at that, from 1960 to 2025. This is the growth of the middle classes, uh, 1.1 billion people uh, soon. And where uh, is that growth taking place? Well, not a lot of in North America or Europe. In Asia, it grows uh, very significantly. In Central and South America, well, again, a significant relative glow growth, and the same thing for Africa. But let's, let's look at it differently. Uh, that's darker red for now, uh, and the lighter shade in 2030. That's where the growth is going to happen. Why? Because just in this area, this little area, uh, the population uh, is greater than the population in the rest of the world. Again, more people live in this small area right now than in the rest of planet Earth put together. And they will have to emigrate. They will have to move to other areas in the planet, mostly to Africa and to Europe. So the world will continue to grow at a good pace, around about 3.6% growth. And yet, what about this year? Well, I'll show you the growth rates shortly. They have found you again. I love you, Mac. Please behave. I probably need to update my operating system. Look at that. Uh, India, 6.5%. Uh, uh, well, you can see the figures there for economic growth. We will continue to grow, to expand financially in... I don't know if you've heard about the hydrocarbon islands uh, in the Pacific Ocean. We have uh, plenty of litter and plastic uh, all over the world, but mostly uh, in the Pacific Ocean, the largest ones uh, larger than Australia, which is why uh, fishing had to be stopped, because there was so much shit, forgive me for that term, that it couldn't be done anymore. But uh, because uh, young fishermen in that area uh, got fed up with it, they started uh, to... Uh, fish it out and uh, sell it for recycling purposes. They're cleaning their environment and they're making money out of it and they're fishing again. So if we can't convince ourselves that something is necessary, then uh, we will be pushed to do it. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, so many people have tried uh, to uh, raise awareness about it, but they failed. Uh, it's only hot news uh, that really impresses uh, impresses and it's like the frog you dip it into uh, just warm water at the beginning but then you heat it up and up and up and uh, that's how you cook it well we are being cooked uh, and not many of us are reacting what about education training and talent, well, new craftsmen uh, will be required, uh, people who are good uh, with their hands uh, and uh, top-level technology. Why is it that the gastronomic university in Mondragon is so successful? Well, because you've got the leaders and role models here. Do you know who this man is? Well, the best handcrafted cars uh, were made by this man who was an engineer at Audi, got fed up with that stressful life and set up his own workshop. Uh, Pagani, what, uh, Pagani uh, is sold for some 2 million euros and uh, you would have to be on a waiting list for over six years to get your own. So there are different ways of doing things and finding high profi highly profitable markets doing something you love. And we sometimes forget that if we have a shared, uh, hopeful and positive vision, uh, then we'll be doing right. We'll do right in our ecosystem. A father uh, would never go home and tell 
his kids that there's no hope. So as a group, as a cluster, uh, we know what to do and what we want to do in cybersecurity, uh, or do we have it already? And if we don't yet, then we need to get together and talk. Um, reading, writing, speaking, and listening are all necessary skills for communication. But uh, at school, we mostly learn about reading and writing. What about listening and talking? Uh, listening is important uh, for a shared, hopeful vision for the near future. Let me also ask you, do you think that we're using all the extraordinary utilities and practicalities that uh, technology has for the value chain? And are we using that uh, to strategically generate value in companies? And uh, here comes my third question. Are we focusing on the market uh, on the basis of the world as it is now? Well, to answer those questions, let me give you an example. Uh, and let me just uh, tell you about the hypothesis first. Psychological quality will give us economic quality. Psychology meaning thinking, attitudes, values. Uh, if we, go, we get that right, uh, then economic output uh, will thrive. Because if you're angry, people around you will be angry. If you're happy, uh, you will make other people happier. And it's values that generate value. Are you familiar with his name? Pedro Pekka. Raise your hand. Well, I have a story for you about this man. We can only generate value and transform ourselves if we act on all five dimensions. Uh, Socrates knew that it's thinking, heart, and courage uh, that need to go together if we use uh, and manage our emotions uh, consequently in a good, val uh, balanced manner so we can be consistent. Because value can be generated and we can transform ourselves if we're excellent uh, on five different dimensions. Attitude, uh, knowledge, skills, and commitment. What do I mean by attitude? Well, loving and uh, believing what we want to do. Knowledge uh, is about learning. And here, we would be talking about emotional uh, intelligence, rational emotion, uh, intelligence, and uh, here, spiritual intelligence. For many, many years, talent uh, has been defined as the combination of the two central uh, factors. You know about it, and you know how to do it, the know-how. And yet, uh, many people uh, are sacked, uh, even though very, they're very talented, uh, because they have a very nasty temperament. In the labor market, uh, we continue to have a lot of talent, much more so than money. So the conventional definition of talent is a commodity. We need people. Uh, who don't just have knowledge and know-how, but also uh, people who can share uh, their talent and skills at the same time as they give us the best of uh, human nature. And not just now, but for the future as well. That means commitment. That means having a shared vision that's positive, that's hopeful for the common good. Is that enough? No, it isn't, because if I know how to be a thief, uh, I might end up ruining my company. You also need ethics. And I'm not just talking about morality here as uh, abiding by the law, not at all. Also, uh, we, we also need critical thinking. And, and when we have human systems where excellence uh, is present in at all five levels, then there's a natural transformation, a sustained uh, paradigm shift in that culture. And yet, uh, you cannot just be, be fantastic in three of those um, 
niches. You have to be uh, good at all five of them, which is why human development has to be holistic. We either have all those five variables present or we won't be doing well. When all five variables work uh, in a balanced manner, that's the magic word that arises. That's culture, governance culture, culture in an organization, uh, for a team, for individuals. You can uh, go at all different levels and layers. And when I say culture, it's not just general culture. General knowledge is much more than that. And when culture is powerful in a human system, you can see the symptoms and because they're part of our DNA. And life makes sense, uh, we feel fulfilled, we feel happy, and we feel sustained success. But you need to weave all of those ingredients and threads together, because if we don't, uh, then we will be imbalanced. I mentioned this man, Pedro Peca, earlier on. Well, it's just an example. I like telling stories and giving examples, because sometimes theory doesn't uh, stick, but stories do. What do I mean by humanistic leadership? Uh, because the world uh, that's to come uh, in the future uh, needs us to be able to face this challenge. His parents were Slovenian. They emigrated to Argentina. His father was a builder, uh, but uh, he uh, later decided uh, to become a priest. And he was asked to go somewhere where his help was really needed. He was sent to Mad uh, Madagascar, Madagascar, which uh, is a very poor part of the world. And he actually went to the poorest area uh, in Madagascar. Look at that, that's a dump, right? Uh, 5,000 people lived in that area with practically all babies uh, who were born uh, in that area uh, died. An environment full of illnesses with very, very low life expectancy. And uh, Thinking about cybersecurity, uh, you should also start by thinking, what can we do with what we've got? What did Pedro have? Well, he had plenty of rubbi rubbish. So he decided it might make sense uh, to uh, do separate collection of the rubbish and sell it. And thanks to that, uh, they found there was a granite quarry in the area under all that rubbish. He asked for the license uh, to uh, exploit it uh, and started to produce uh, some gravel. And because of his building skills, uh, he taught the population to build uh, their own homes, uh, as a result of which 25,000 people live in that area now in much better conditions with schools, hos a hospital, and uh, the uh, birth death rate uh, is uh, practically 2%, not 98%, like, like it was in the past. And this is what it looks like in Madagascar. Pedro Peca, uh, he's the man. So the future is not unavoidable. We can invent our own future at micro and macro level, individually and collectively, as long as we have the right attitude, knowledge, skills, and commitment. And this applies to digitization, to cybersecurity, to any uh, area. But I agree with Pedro Opeka. Uh, it's all about empowerment. Uh, he uh, had 17 mayors collect. Uh, elected, and uh, they uh, collaborate. Uh, different areas work on embroidery, on rice fields, on building work, uh, so that synergies can be the makes make the most of. That's social transformation, and I would like him uh, to be awarded the Nobel Prize for uh, 
economy as well, not just for social issues. So this is my message. Uh, we don't live uh, just depending on our skills and capacities, uh, but also and mostly of our beliefs. We can face the challenge of cybersecurity, and we will as long as we believe we can, because it, there are so many people with skills and capacities, uh, but they don't believe in themselves, so they will never do anything extraordinary. Values generate value. So the critical factor is having intelligence serving love. I didn't tell you very much about cybersecurity. Uh, my presentation is my, much more general. But uh, I really hope that we can have our feet on the ground, our head with the stars, and remember that uh, loving is looking after things and create new realities. All the best.